Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Wardsy, and this is going to be a review of the Wise Owl Cloud, a pretty hyped up mouse, but it might have gone under the radar for some people. Um, a lot of you guys may be too young to really appreciate this, as it is a Steel Series Sensei clone and the first true one that we have ever seen. Um, when I was getting into mice, a lot of people said that the XM1 shape was essentially a clone of the Steel Series rival, but that's just, or the Sensei, my apologies, but that is just truly um, not the case. The sides are similar. Um, and just how they feel like if you're going to fingertip the mouse, but the rest of the shape is just so different that I wouldn't even say that they're close. The cloud is going to be a large mouse, um, which is something we really don't see anymore. Like in hand, it's going to feel noticeably bigger than the GPX. I think it's a great palm grip shape, honestly. I'll get into how I grip it and just some grip styles, but... But yeah, simply put, this is not going to be for somebody who is used to using a smaller mouse, let's say a WL mouse, a ULX, a Lamzu Maya, anything in that size range. Pretty much all of the mice that came out last year are just going to feel a lot smaller than this in comparison. If you are somebody who kind of just wants to like plop your hand on a mouse, try that more old fashioned, like decade old mouse design with modern features and weight. I would say go for it. Like if you're somebody who's been looking for a Sensei clone, this is a no brainer, honestly. I'll get to some quality aspects. There are a few like minor concerns, but ultimately this is a well-balanced 57 gram large mouse, 4K polling rate, um, really well implemented Huano blue shell pink dots in my opinion, and it's just a joy to use. I do have larger 21 by 11 hands. I don't have fucking NBA player hands, but compared to most people who are like palm gripping the Viper mini shape, I have large hands for the mouse scene. I mean, this is a scene with a lot of people who have small hands i'm not gonna lie which is entirely why designs like this have kind of faded out of existence because nobody wants to use large mice that kind of don't allow you a ton of room to like micro adjust with but in my opinion my gameplay my time using this mouse it has been exceptional and this is a mouse that i feel very locked in on and i know it's a pretty generic phrase that i say sometimes but it's when all the factors come together like the button height is very nice in my opinion the coating's really good both sides are very comfortable and allow me to place my fingers pretty much wherever I want to and then I can like bring the mouse into my palm and I just feel like I have an incredible grip of it so everything on the shape really does come together for me the pump placement is really nothing that we see too much nowadays it does have a very nice um like curve downwards that it allows it to fit in your palm so naturally at least for my hand size but yeah it's not going to be like that super aggressive high profile design like say something like the pulsar x2h where it's trying to be a claw grip shape just by giving you a fucking massive bulby hump it does not feel very smooth especially on the sides there is this like rigid bar you can almost see like how it shines on it and that kind of est establishes like an upper area for finger placement it's just all very comfortable for me i place my ring finger like right on the ridge it just feels very locked in i know i'm going into my personal grip style a bit more than i do on most mice but i just feel like it's important because this is an out there shape um not made for like every hand size so i'm just explaining how i go about it the click design um is like very old-fashioned there's no comfort grooves and it just reminds me of old Microsoft mice. I like it a lot, but that is just like the aesthetic design. The clicks themselves are Juano blue shell pink dots, and I hope you can see just how spammable and light they are. Really perfect tensioning. There is going to be a good amount of free travel, as you can see, which allows for that, but I don't think it's really concerning. There is also a bit more side wobble and like creaking feeling than I would like, um, so that is definitely one of the nitpicks. If they could just like tighten that up while keeping the um, bouncy and just really spammable good click feeling i think that that makes the clicks like a close to a 10 out of 10 as opposed to like an 8.5 maybe where they're at now and i don't know how well you'll be able to see but the clicks are just a lot less stiff than on something like the endgame gear xm2 Wii. and i just don't know showing it like without audio that'll really paint the picture but i give these clicks a super solid rating the button height is also low if you have smaller hands and you're gripping like up here it is obviously not going to be as low um so do keep in mind your grip style but the thumb angle is very low as well which allows for more spammable clicks and i will say that the real feel click latency is about negative one ms so a lot better than zowie was at four ms and even better than the super light at around one ms so very good performance and yeah now moving on to the side buttons these are definitely not as well designed as the clicks and I am a big side button snob and I've been able to use these in Fortnite but there are some issues it's not that the button is too stiff or heavy but there is a somewhat hollow feeling and they also do press into the shell just more than I would like as you can see it activates here and then there's all this room for it to press into the shell and yeah this is not something that I'm like unable to use in Fortnite but you just would like to see a bit more premium of a side button implementation um, even though I would say that these are solid they are angled down in a pretty unique way 
away. I think mouse four is a little bit high, maybe like one millimeter high, but like I said, I've been able to use this mouse, but I do wish the side buttons were a little bit better. Maybe in the next batch, they can address those, but it's a, again, like a small nitpick that doesn't really break the mouse. Now the quality and the overall shell, um, this is something interesting. I actually want to get like your, the viewers input on this because this mouse, it feels exceptionally high quality. Like if I really squeeze it similar to a Lambzu mouse, like I can feel the sides press in a bit, but look at like my hand is shaking from the amount of pressure I'm applying. It feels perfectly fine and like even rock solid when you just apply like in-game amounts of pressure. So I would say this is a build that is fine. Could I see it like becoming creaky in the long run? Maybe. But I don't know, there's just nothing concrete to look at and be like, this mouse feels poorly built. I don't, like, why even fucking squeeze the bottom of the mouse? There's just literally no point of doing it. No, like, creaking or rattling. So yeah, in hand, the overall feeling and quality of the mouse at 57 grams, I think it's very good. I really don't have any um, issues with the build or just the quality feeling. Like I said, some of the buttons could be tuned up. Um, the coating is very good. Like, one of the truly best coatings on the market. I would say compared to Endgame gear, it's just a little bit less um dry it's a bit more wet but it's not going to be a slippery coating i know you guys might see some like stains on it but that's just like how the coating is it is very grippy and when you actually look at the mouse you can't see anything but when it's in a fucking ring light you can see it shocker um i have so many people telling me i'm like dirty and need to clean my mice fuck you um but yeah now moving on what is next i mean the scroll wheel it's just very generic it is I don't know, it feels like kind of small compared to the rest of the mouse, like proportionally, but I haven't had a single issue with it. The click is on the medium side, I would say like lighter than the typical scroll wheel click. And I just have not had any like inconsistencies, feels like it's over looped, any issues like that. God, I just almost like fucking threw my mice 20 feet behind me. Um, The stock skates, they do give you um, an option for like the larger Zowie style skates. You can see the cutouts and yeah, you can install those if you want. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but there is like little adhesive and like dust getting caught around the edges of the skates. Um, that is not really ideal on some things like glass fence. I feel like it makes it scrape more, but I don't fucking know. Honestly, I'm good with the performance of these skates. It doesn't feel like you would need to change them, but all, honestly, I don't even change stock skates on 90% of my mice nowadays. They're just good enough, but you can pretty much put whatever you want on this mouse, so the world is your oyster. But yeah, now flipping the mouse over and getting to the sensor, this is something that I only ran into a few issues on, which I feel like every mouse, I'm running into some fucking issue besides Zowie on 1K, quite literally not a single hiccup ever in months of testing. But yeah, basically on 4K, sometimes the signal would just completely drop and my mouse will freeze for a few seconds. Is that acceptable? No, but it also seems like I'm the only person in the world having that issue, which is infuriating. I've watched the other reviews of this mouse. Nobody else reports it. I do have the um, 4K dongle, which was easy to set up, and I've not run into any issues on 2K Hertz pulling, so I've just used that, gotten used to that. Why is that with sensor implementation? Even going back to the OGM Pro, it just feels very nice. And I don't even know how I would begin to like quantify this. A fucking polling consistency test would not do it. Um, but Wise Owl's implementation just feels, I would say maybe even a cut above compared to like Lamzu and Pulsar's 4K. It just does feel like very good wireless tech, which is again, why it's kind of annoying that I would just get these fucking, my mouse would just disconnect essentially on 4K, which is obviously like, that is the one thing that can't happen on a wireless mouse. It stops working wirelessly, but using it on 2K, I'm not going to act like there's a big performance difference. Even the battery life was a bit better and I still found the battery life to be a little bit on the mediocre end not like to the point where it's like the WL mouse beast X where it's dying like every few days um, but yeah I would say like a week ish of battery life is what you're going to expect on 2 or 4k hertz depending on how much you use the mouse but yeah this mouse does have the on and off feature like the um, Razer Viper Ultimate where it does also work as a DPI button you can change the polling rate and even the mode I don't know if this mouse is fucking bluetooth compatible it might be who, who uses their mice with bluetooth I'm sure plenty of people do um but yeah that's going to be about all for the review the coverage of this mouse i like i've said coming in at 57 grams on a large mouse it just feels very nice in hand it's a shape that i've really enjoyed and yeah in my personal opinion this is the direction that chinese mice should be going in i would liken wise owl much more closely to a company like lamzu than some of the chinese mouse companies like ajaz and dharma shark who i truly feel like just have no heart and are not really putting out designs that the community cares for. They're just being like, hey, we are a parent factory. We're just going to fucking put out pretty much the same thing that our clients are because we realize we can make money from it. So yeah, I'm very interested.
interested in seeing what Wise Owl does next for a Sensei clone. I was very satisfied with this. I don't have my copy anymore. I have only tried one on loan back in like 2020 or 2021, but as from memory, this does feel very close. And yeah, if you are looking for a Sensei, once again, I would say that this is the mouse to go for. If you just have large hands in general and are looking for a mouse that has a much more like kind of relaxed design, just to plop your hand on it and figure it out type of design, um, I would say go for it. I will give this mouse the seal of approval, even with the few shortcomings, just because I do think that this is a mouse that like moves the needle moves the mouse scene in the right direction is something truly unique. Like name the last good non-ergo large mouse. I will wait and I think I will never stop waiting. And yeah, at the $100 price point with a $15 optional dongle, I feel like that's pretty much the price point it belongs at. If it could have been like $10 or $15 cheaper, that would obviously have been very cool and much appreciated, but I don't think it is an egregious ask. And if it's not the shape for you, just don't go for it. You know, that is how gaming mice work. Yeah, obviously, if you skip out on the 4K dongle, having this mouse experience for under $100, I don't think that's anything to scoff at. Um, so yeah, the Wise Owl Cloud, I've been testing it for some time now, waiting to see if anything ma major would pop up, and it has not. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. If there's any other like comparison content you would like to see, um, let me know. But yeah, this is a truly good mouse, in my opinion. That's going to be all. Peace out.